Business Bites with Invest Northern Ireland. Thinking of growing your sales outside Northern Ireland? Visit investni.com slash export for help and advice to go further and grow stronger in export markets. Hi, welcome to another edition of Business Bites from Bauer Media Audio here in Northern Ireland. My name is David Tide, Managing Director of Bauer Media in Northern Ireland. And each week we catch up with an interesting guest from the world of business. This week it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Andy Park, from One Park Life to Business Bites. Andy, you're very welcome. Uh, good morning, David. Uh, thank you very much for your kind invitation. I'm delighted to be here this morning. It's absolutely brilliant to have you here, uh, Andy. Um, let's just wind the clock back. For those of you, uh, for those watching who don't know, Andy, most people in this part of the world may have known you in a past life as a professional rugby player for Ulster. So that was back in the... 19 late 90s won the european cup there and the european cup team in 1999 so how did you get from rugby to one park life and we'll talk about what that is in a second yeah i suppose you're right um rugby was was a passion and and, and sort of um in 1999 we had a, a wonderful a wonderful journey winning the cup um since then that was sort of a bittersweet for me because um, from winning the cup, then I, I sort of went on into the world of business uh, and left the rugby scene. Um, so effectively, I've been in, in the working world for about 22 years uh, in business. And I've, I've been in sort of, um, to coin the old phrase, to pivot. I've, I've, I've pivoted from um, moving from rugby into, um, into graphic design, into advertising world and marketing communications, from running my own uh, ad agency through to um, into the world of sports management and running the European and MENA division for a, for a global sports management division. Um, with that love of sport, um, it was great, a lot of travel, a lot of other activities, but unfortunately, um, 2010, I had a, a diagnosis of um, ulcerative colitis, um, which had a profound impact on, on my own health and my own lifestyle. So with that shift, um, I started to look at my own, and my own lifestyle and um, bits and pieces. And from there, I then moved um, from doing consultancy work into setting up One Park Life. Okay, well, that's a journey in itself. So, One Park Life. Then, what what is One Park Life? What's its aims and objectives, and what are you trying to do with the, with this company? Well, essentially, One Park Life is a um, leadership and wellness practice. Um, and essentially, we're trying to help businesses and individuals drive positive change, and um, essentially keeping um, wellness um, at the core. Uh, and and really, so we we do some executive coaching where we address mind shift and shaping purpose. We look at transition coaching helping increase speed of change and um, adoption for when people are changing jobs. Um, and then also a number of kind of personal workshops with CEOs, professional athletes, script writers, TV screenwriters. But from the wellness perspective, um, we're really trying to get into the workplace and work with organizations and individuals and, and addressing workplace wellness. And how have you, how have you found um, that this whole area of wellness in the workplace has changed over the last few years? Because, Going back a few years, it wasn't really on the agenda, but it seems to be very much on the agenda now. I, I, I think you're right there. I think in 2016, um, I think some sort of trends and predictions mentioned that you know we're going to move from sort of workplace wellness programs into growing um, to that of culture of wellness at work, and it's it's, it's still that ongoing transition is happening. Uh, I think the culture of wellness is 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 a long way off in a number of organisations. I think some stats that came out recently um, that nearly one in five businesses are currently not doing anything to employ to improve employee health or well-being and um, kind of one of the biggest areas of stress still remains to be management style um, is the most common cause of stress so I think we still need to address um, accountability for employers and employees and I think we both need to take responsibility for that. Yeah what, what are some of the common uh, trends and themes that you see when you're talking with businesses what are some of, what are some of the challenges and how how are some of the uh, coping mechanisms to get over those challenges what 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 do you see when you're talking with businesses I think one of the, one of the kind of the key areas is, is trying to understand what strategy and what approach they're going to take to it because every business is different you know the, the number of um you know the larger corporate organizations aren't entirely sure how to address you know, the the bigger the bigger numbers um the hybrid uh, impact has certainly helped um impacted things as well and i think a lot of organizations are trying to adjust to that um I, I think it starts really with trying to understand from an education point of view as individuals how we run our lifestyles 
what's the most appropriate way for us to adjust to a working environment? Because if you think about the five days or seven days that we work um, and the working from home, those blurred lines suddenly become a professional a personal impact. Um, and I think, you know, stress, um, you know, how people are managing stress, you know, how do you bring mindful practice into your daily routine? How do you set your intentions? What boundaries do you have to differentiate the working world and your personal world if you're working from home? So there's a number of areas that still need to be addressed. Um, and organizations need to look from a, a really from a strategic point of view and a 360 lens to that. And how do you think the, um, obviously, you know, someone said to me once, what used to happen in a year uh, now happens in a month and what used to happen in a month now can happen in a week, uh, especially post the kind of COVID scenario that we've been in the and, and all the other challenges that are flying in to business right now. So what's your advice for people who are thinking like whose businesses are operating in that such a quick, quick turnaround and, and having to deal with events that are just happening a lot quicker perceptually than perhaps they were in the past? Uh, well, from, from one perspective, I think we need to understand that and have a little bit of empathy. I think everyone um, works at different pace. And I think that pace, if we're driving that within our individuals and our employers, is, is, employees, is always going to cause problems. And I think from that perspective, we need to sort of take a step back and, and sort of set our intentions for that day and be able to sort of, you know, the, 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 the stress we put on ourselves is, is really our, our setting our own deadlines. If, if companies are setting deadlines for our staff, and that's just the way the working world is. We need to be able to be accountable for that, but we also have the empathy to think everyone doesn't work in the same way. I think we need to slow down and be re reflective and a bit more realistic in terms of those goals and the ambitions of the organizations. Um, expecting people to work 12, 14 hour days um, isn't, isn't realistic, you know, and not taking concerns for their kind of mental and, and their overall well-being. Yeah. Um, and um, have you, is there anything that you got from your sort of world of uh, your, your sporting life that you've sort of incorporated into some of the training and the development work that you do because that's quite a common theme isn't it when when you look at people who've had a background in sport that they bring some of the disciplines that that, that they learn from that environment yeah i, I think you know, professional sport has changed dramatically since when i played it um and having working with you know professional sports people um they're still very much incorporated into that world and, and how things are operating so everything a lot of things are done for them um, I think the problem is when they work out of that you know, professional world uh, and into the real world, it's suddenly you're isolated, you're on your own, and that's when mental health problems come in because there's nobody telling you what to do, you come into training, what to wear, what time you're meeting that, um, and, and all those kind of aspects. And here's a training plan, meeting plan, and nutrition plan. So that education, what we're trying to say is, just, you, know, you know, understanding what wellness is and what, what the definition is, that it, you know, it's a complete integration from mind, body, and spirit. Um, so everything we do has an impact on that. So I think... You know, in terms of how we reflect upon our days, how we set our intentions for days, how we can differentiate and set boundaries for ourselves from that perspective as well, would be very key to that. So it's, it's, it's taking control of our own lives and being able to do things. Um, when you step out of that sort of working world, that you sort of have that boundary to say, I'm not going to go back, I'm not going to look at emails. Um, sleep is so important. Uh, still, a lot of us, you know, between 10 and 2, a lot of our sleep actually is, is, um, is when our sort of restoration sort of happens within the cells and the body. Um, you know, our digestive system's working at 10.30 at night, but if we're watching a Netflix show, suddenly, you know, at 10.30 at night, we might have a wee hunger again. Now, if we were sleeping or in bed, you probably wouldn't have had that food. So there's so many kind of impacts for our daily routine and lifestyle that actually should be more educated on and aware of that we can start to apply in the workplace. Obviously, we're heading towards Christmas and um, into a new year. A lot of people talk about the dark days of winter and how that affects uh, performance and mental health challenges. And then there's obviously a lot of external talk about the future of the uh, economic situation, etc. Have you noticed that, that that these things have become a more of a challenge than perhaps in business than perhaps the challenges of even the COVID period? Or do you think it's better, worse? Or where are people's heads at? I think, you know, you, you can't forget the, the impact of the pandemic, you know, the largest pandemic that you and I and a lot of our, a lot of our colleagues and, and, and listeners would, would, have, would have been impacted by. So I don't think, I think we're still coming out of that. I think that accelerated the digital world and how we interact. And that's been problem, problematic in itself that we're stuck at home now. Um, you know, we're, we're sort of all on Teams, we're all on Zoom. We can sort of meet any time, you know, so there's no time to switch off. 
Um, I think obviously the, the impacts and, and that finan you know, financial wellness that we're going to have a, an impact on as well. So if you take it aside from the, the nutrition, the meditation, the stress, you know, all those areas that we can help with, but actually the wellness of our financial areas. And um, I, I think that is going to be uh, an area where organizations really have to address. So we're coming to the end of our conversation here today, Andy, and I suppose um, it would be great just to get your final thoughts on uh, wellness in business and what, what you really, truly believe uh, in summary it, it, all, it all means for you. Yeah, I, I suppose when you think about wellness, um, you know, businesses talk a lot about human being human centric, and that's moving now a little bit more to being life centric. From a wellness perspective, I'm very much in the belief that we should be lifestyle centric. And what I mean by that is, you know, our lifestyle is at the heart of everything and how we live. Uh, and essentially, you know, our lifestyle is our health. So if people can remember that, that the impact of everything that we do in our lives impacts our health and we live in a better way, then wellness should fall into itself. Very wise words, Andy. And thank you for being our guest this week. All the information is on the website, oneparklife.com, and your contact information is coming up at the end of the conversation. But Andy, it's been absolutely brilliant meeting you this week. Thank you. Thanks very much, David. It's been a pleasure. Business Bites with Invest Northern Ireland. Go further and grow stronger with Invest NI. Visit investni.com slash export to reach your exporting potential. Invest NI. Go further and grow stronger.